Hello everyone, uh, we mentioned we are going to cover one more game from the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, but I decided not to show another game from the Masters Division, uh, rather we are going to show one game from the Challengers Division, uh, as the winner of the Challengers Division, as you all know, uh, gets to play in next year's uh, uh, Masters Edition. Uh, so here we have a game between uh, Belarus uh, Grand Master Vladislav Kovalev, uh, he's playing against International Master uh, from Netherlands, uh, Stefan Kuipers, and uh, it's uh, not sure how to pronounce that Dutch names, but uh, could be could be Kuipers. Um, it's a really interesting game, and uh, well, as usual, I don't know if you're uh, if you're into let's say League of Legends or maybe into Hearthstone or something like that. Uh, you know that uh, well. The better you get, uh, you will uh, then face, of course, stronger opponents. And uh, when you constantly face stronger opponents, like if you're uh, I don't know in um, uh, in Challenger or in Hearthstone, if you are in Legend, uh, you will uh, you most likely you will have uh, something that is called uh, a meta, uh, su such is also in chess. There are also there are meta openings, uh, and um, since this is not the highest uh, tier tournament like uh, Tata Steel Masters, this is Tata Steel Challengers. Here you will encounter uh, some off meta uh, openings, so to say. Uh, they are still all uh, uh, very correct and very uh, <laughs> uh, well. Correct is the correct term, I would say. Uh, uh, not, not sure how to put it. Uh, you will not see like gambits or only half correct gambits or incorrect gambits, but uh, uh, you will see something that you will not be seeing like in uh, 2750 or 2800 tournaments. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, check out the, this very nice game. So we have e4 by Kovalev and we have e6, the French defense. d4, we have d5, sorry about that. Uh, knight to d2, the Tarash variation of the French, and now c5. Uh, we have knight to g to f3, c captures on d4, knight captures, and now knight to c6. Uh, bishop to b5, developing and also pinning the knight on c6, bishop to d7, and now knight captures. Uh, we have b captures uh, on c6, and now bishop goes back to d3. And as you can see here, white is somewhat... Uh, leading in development, but black also uh, has uh, something to show for. He has a very nice semi-open B file for the rook. Uh, black has uh, an excellent center and should not have any problems, uh, you know, uh, development-wise. Uh, queen to c7, developing the queen. Also, the queen will come in handy in supporting uh, of the c-pawn advancement. And also, you are already uh, attacking the king side should white castle king side. Uh, we have queen to e2 by white, knight to e7, and now comes castles. Uh, knight to g6, uh, a nice square for the knight, uh, also as you don't have any support uh, you can't kick it away uh, just yet. Uh, knight goes to f3 and now bishop to d6, pressuring the h2 pawn if the knight would ever move. Uh, we have rook to e1 and now knight to f4. And uh, interestingly this has all been played before. Uh, bishop captures, uh, bishop captures for example uh, in 1976 in Moscow uh, Zakharov Alexander played uh, this position with the white pieces against Tigran Petrosian and c4 was used uh, in that game where um, Zakharov was able to draw a game against Tigran Petrosian uh, but in this game uh, Kovalev uses g3. It's a new move in this position and as of this moment on move 14 we have a completely new game. Uh, bishop goes back to d6 and now e captures on d5. e5 is also possible forcing the bishop to move back uh, but as uh, the black king is still in the center it does uh, make sense to open up uh, uh, two open lines. Uh, c captures on d5 of course the pawn is pinned and now comes rook a to c1. White wants to push c4 and uh, uh, bust open uh, the center and also open up the c file for his rook. Uh, rook to d8, black is still waiting uh, to see what happens before committing to castling. Uh, we have c4 by white, d captures on c4 and now rook captures on c4 attacking the queen. Queen to b6 uh, and now comes knight to e5 and here indeed it would be, uh, castling would come prematurely here. For example if you actually decided to castle here then bishop captures on h7 would win you the game immediately after king captures, queen h5 check, king moves now comes rook here and there is very little you can do about this checkmate. Even f6 will not help you uh, as the knight is covering the f7 square so you cannot escape with the king. Uh, so after this knight to e5 move we have bishop captures eliminating the knight, queen captures and only now does black castle as uh, the queen now uh, uh, the knight has been eliminated so the f7 square is not uh, protected so here 
Uh, you could capture, but uh, black would still be able to escape. Queen h5, we go with the same variation, rook h4. But now f6 makes room for the king, and you are no longer able to improve your position in any way uh, that would help you continue this attack, and any checking or whatnot uh, would simply result in black escaping. Yeah, queen h5 check, you can go to e7, and here black would be very safe. So here, after castles, we have a3. The queen is still guarding the b2 pawn, so perhaps b4 is also planned. Uh, and here we have rook to c8. Uh, uh, Stefan offers a trade of rooks. We have rook to d4. Uh, and here it's very interesting. As we already mentioned, um, this sacrifice doesn't work. Uh, but uh, we have rook to d4 now, and the bishop is now under attack. So what would you do here? Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting position for you to pause and your really your spidey sense should uh, really start to tingle, to tingle here. As uh, he, in the game bishop to c6 was played, which is a terrible mistake, uh, but it's also, uh, well, it's, it's, a, it's a very easy one to make. For example, if you go queen to c7 here, uh, guard the bishop and offer a trade of queens, you'll be fine. If you go bishop to e8, you'll be fine. But bishop to c6, this doesn't work, and it doesn't work for a very specific reason. Uh, after black played bishop to c6, feel free to pause the video here and try to find what Vladislav played here in this position uh, that really gives white a crushing uh, a combination. Uh, well, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious, but still, for those of you who were able to do it, as it is a Monday, congratulations, you are an excellent attacker. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop captures on h7. Uh, and now it works. And now you might think, okay, but how does it work now? Uh, well, king captures on h7 was played, and here rook to g4. And it was in this position that uh, uh, Dutch international master Stefan Kuipers resigned the game, uh, as there is uh, nothing you can do to defend checkmate. But we'll, we're going to return to this. Uh, first, we have to see... Uh, here in this position, after instead of rook to d4, why doesn't it work now? Uh, here, bishop captures doesn't work with the same idea. King here and rook g4, because the bishop is protecting um, the e6 pawn. That's the, that's the point. The queen also protects the e6 pawn. And here, uh, if black, for example, played f6, you could go rook to h4, check, king g8. And now if you go queen h5, black can always escape, and uh, there's no way to continue the attack. But here, now you will understand the problem. After rook c8, rook d4, and bishop to c6, why bishop to c6 is such a terrible problem. Uh, because the bishop is no longer protecting the e6 pawn, uh, as it's no longer on d7, and also it blocks the queen's protection of the pawn. So this is why the sacrifice now works. Bishop captures, king captures, and now rook to g4. And now there's no way to defend, because uh, after all the lines, uh, for example, if g6, then rook h4 check, king g8, and the rook h8, this will be checkmate. Uh, but uh, And of course, if rook here defending the pawn, then queen h5 is checkmate. But the real beauty is that after f6, now you have this option of playing rook h4 check. And if king g6, queen h5 is checkmate. And now, if king g8, now the bishop no longer uh, protects the e6 pawn. So now queen captures on e6 is deadly. Uh, you can't go anywhere along the h-file. The rook is covering that. You have to block with the rook. And now this rook is unguarded. That is the point. Not only is the bishop not controlling the e6 pawn, but also it's not guarding the rook. Queen captures with check. You have to block. And now everything falls apart. Queen e6 check. Rook f7. Queen h3. You can't really do much to protect checkmate here, you have to move the rook, uh, but still you're just gonna get rook h8 check, king f7, queen h5 check, block, and queen h7 checkmate. Uh, the uh, rook on e1 is controlling the entire e-file as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, a very easy sacrifice to miss, but uh, what a beautiful move, this bishop to c6 blocks the queen's protection of the e6 pawn, the bishop no longer protects it, and the bishop no longer guards the rook, and here everything simply uh, is possible. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game, I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, and also I did prepare the standings of the challenger section, as you can see, uh, Vladislav uh, Kovalev won the challenger section of the Tata Steel 2019 with 10 out of 13, so that's uh, one and a half point uh, ahead of uh, uh, Andrei Sipenko, Benjamin Gledura, and Maxim Shigaev, who are, bo all three of them are tied for second place. 
So that's uh, quite an achievement, uh, a point and a half uh, ahead of everyone else. Then Anton Korobov and Erwin uh, Lamy with uh, seven and a half uh, out of 13. Then with seven, we have Evgeny Barev and Parha Maksudlu. Uh, then with six, uh, Lukas Van Forest. Uh, Vincent Kemar with five and a half out of 13. Then uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda with five, five out of 13. Uh, then Dinara Sadukasova and Elizabeth Pietz with three and a half out of 13. And then Stefan Kuipers who lost uh, this game that you've just seen with three out of 13. So, uh, as it always goes, the winner of uh, the challenger section plays in the master section next year. So, uh, Stefan, uh, not Stefan Kupers, but Vladislav Kovalev, uh, Grandmaster from Belarus, uh, will be playing in the 2020 edition of the Tata Steel Masters. And so far, only Magnus Carlsen and Vladislav uh, are surely playing in uh, next year's Tata Steel Masters. And also, uh, as we didn't show the standings after the Masters edition, uh, there you have it. Magnus Carlsen, 9 out of 13. Uh, then in second place, Anish Giri with 8.5 out of 13. Uh, the only game Giri lost is that to Jan Nepomniashi, Nepomniashi <laughs> to, uh, where, when he blundered um, a piece in, in the first game they played. Uh, then in third place, uh, Nepo also with uh, seven and a half out of thirteen, and then Ding Liren with seven and a half out of thirteen. And I believe Ding Liren, uh, the only player alongside Magnus Carlsen who hasn't lost a single game. That Ding Liren is simply unbeatable. He uh, he even finished the candidates uh, <laughs> without losing a single game. Also, Vishwanathan Anand on seven and a half out of thirteen. Uh, Vidit Gujarati on 7 out of 13, then Timur Rajabov and Samuel Shankland and Richard Rapport on 6 and a half out of 13. <coughs> uh, Yang Shishtov Duda 5 and a half out of 13, Vladimir Ferosev and Shahriya Mamidyar 5 out of 13, and Jordan Van Forest and Vladimir Kramnik on 4 and a half out of 13. So definitely not the greatest tournament for Vladimir Kramnik or Shahriar Mamedyarov, especially Mamedyarov, who uh, I believe uh, has not won a single game yet in 2019. And every game uh, he played in the Tata Steel uh, Masters lost him uh, some rating points uh, as he's so uh, high rated. I believe he lost 27 and something points in this tournament, which is huge. I mean, that's... Uh, that's incredible. I don't. Uh, I, I don't think he is in the twenty eight uh, hundred club uh, no longer, uh, but any longer. But um, you know, he, he's a great player. I'm sure he'll get back there. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you've enjoyed the coverage. Uh, I would like to thank Konstantin Pogorelov, uh, Izat Hanbali, uh, Dan O'Hanlon, Jeffrey Miller, and Informed or Informed uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was really a pleasure meeting Dan O'Hanlon. Uh, we met in the uh, in London during the World Chess Championship match between Carlson and Caruana. He's really uh, a, a lovely gentleman. Uh, so yeah. Uh, like I said, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content, continuing the Capablanca saga. And if you know of any excellent games uh, in the uh, Gibraltar Chess Festival, haven't really been following that, uh, do use hashtag suggestion, and I will check up on your suggestions. Uh, so thank you all, and I will see you soon.